Hey guys, Clone Guy here, and today we're going to be reviewing the chisel. Finally, I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for this and asking for the chisel, but I don't have one yet on my own account, so I had to uh, borrow an account from Flying Egg, and he's letting me use it to review it for you guys, and boy oh boy am I in love with this thing. Now there are certain tanks in this game that have insane carry potential. Tanks where you're going to, if you're gonna get a 10 kill game, or... Um, get a call of Banos medal or something else epic like that. There are certain tanks in this game that just make it easier just because of their carry potential. Tanks like the KV-2 or the Super Conqueror or the T-29 or the M-46 Patton or the Centurion Action 10 or even the Chieftain. Those are all huge carry potential tanks. Those tanks can really, really carry because they have something special about them going for them. For instance, the Patton has nice ammo, really consistent gun, good rate of fire, good turret armor. The Action X is pretty much the same deal, except a little more accurate gun, but a little less rate of fire. The Chieftain, same deal. It's got a good turret, lots of ammo, can dish out a lot of damage. And uh, they decided to put all three of those things into one tank, and that is the Chisel. Now this thing doesn't have the DPM of those three tanks just listed, it kind of loses that, but it still retains insane things. All right, um, it's got the hull of the Action X, the turret of the Patton, and the gun of the Chieftain. Man, oh man, oh man. And uh, that means it has 270 millimeters of standard penetration with 400 alpha on a medium tank, 310 premium APCR, and it has Hesh with 140 alpha damage, 515 Oh, sorry, 140 penetration, 515 alpha damage. Aim time, 2.3, not the greatest. Accuracy, 0.32, that's actually pretty good. And rate of fire, 6.67, also not the greatest, but that's fine. Because this has the Patton turret, it has 420 meters view range. So you don't need optics on this. That's pretty insane. And that's not all. That's not the only special thing this has. The Patton has 9 degrees of gun depression. However, this tank with the bigger gun <laughs> has 10. 10 degrees of gun depression. Oh my goodness, it shoots APCR standard and premium. 1372 premium APC or standard APCR, 1350 premium APCR, and 671 with its hash. So, you know, you got to get a little bit used, used to that. Your ammo rack, well, it's a Centurion Hall, is everywhere. And I think I have an example of that later in the videos today, the replays. Um, and yeah, that's not all. 20. 0.24 horsepower per ton with a 57 km hour top speed limit. Oh man. Really good terrain resistances. 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 1.6 because it has the Centurion Action X hull, which has great tracks. And this thing also has spaced armor all along the sides and the rear and the front, which uh, can really, really troll the enemy team. And they, are, they count as 25 millimeters, but they're angled like this. You see how it's not 25 that way, I think. So I'm not exactly sure. So we'll take a look at this armor in a, uh, a better view. And, uh, and then we'll jump into some gameplay and then we'll play it live in front of you guys. The same old, same old kind of stuff we usually do. And I will see you guys there. Here we have the chisel. Let's look at its armor. Upper plate, decent against tier eights. That's fine. That'll do some things. But then you have this. When you hit, if you weave it through, which I don't think you can, I don't think the gap is big enough to weave through, um, you know, you hit the hull. But if you don't weave through, if we can hit it, there we go. Yep, there we go. There we go. It's about 200 millimeters of effective armor. If you angle and you hit it, can we hit them? Can we hit one? There we go. 320. Side armor is the same thing. If you weave it through, it's nice and weak. If you don't, you know, you're going to have a world of hurt because, you know, it's a mercenary tank. Turret armor, it's the Patton's turret. So... As you can see, it's pretty good. 
it's decent. It's not great if you hit around here and you have premium rounds you can go through. You know, it's got a cupola, a pretty weak one. I wonder if you can even HE with some guns. So keep that in mind. Underneath the turret ring is not the greatest. Uh, but you have a, uh, a mantlet, which works sometimes. Other times it doesn't, because it's an American one. That just seems to be the case with American turrets. They like sometimes work, sometimes don't. But let's get to the comparison real quick. As you can see, it's got the same health as the Action X, but 50 less than the Patton. Same turret as the Patton. Same hull as the Action X, but with spaced armor. Um, not as heavy as the Action X, which is interesting, actually. I think because it doesn't carry as much ammo. DPM, there you go. As you can see, it's got the worst DPM. Worst reload, worst rate of fire, worst aim time. Um, same exact gun handling as the Action X. Actually, on the move, it is exactly the same as the Action X. So if you've played the Action X and you like that gun handling, you'll like this thing. The caliber, it's 119 millimeter, which I said in one of my previous videos that the Chieftain actually has a 119 millimeter gun, and I was corrected by multiple people saying, no, it has 120. No, look, it does. It has 119 millimeter. There you go. Uh, 59 ammo capacity, which is great for 400 alpha that's amazing best in class penetration worst in class premium pen but it's apcr it has hesh as its he and it's the fastest one here the most mobile and has some of it's it's right in the middle for ground resistances but it has 410 view range my gosh it even has better camo rating it has the best camo rating actually looking at it. it's got better camo rating than the patent and the action x wow uh this tank is good and uh it's good. It's good. It's not going to dominate and overpower you in games. Like, you can you can still outperform this in the patent just because the patent's rate of fire, the Action X's rate of fire. Um, but this tank is good. It is good. It really is. And I don't know how I get introduced into the game like this, considering the 907 got nerfed, the 260 got nerfed, um, the Progetto got nerfed. Pretty much every tank that's been entering this game is getting nerfed. But not this one. Why? Because remember, this is World of Tanks Mercenaries. Not World of Tanks. No, no, no. Well, it takes mercenaries. So mercenary tanks have to be good. All right. Let's get into some gameplay for you guys. I've got quite a few replays, and then we'll jump into a live one. Our first game is on steps. And we're using the compass map because it is better. And some good map awareness in this game, I think. I think we made some pretty good plays. Knew where we needed to go, went where we needed to go. And uh, the tank performed well. And that we're using the compass map. And I'm emphasizing that because I keep getting told almost every single video. There's like three or four different comments telling me I'm a noob for using the compass map. And it's like, look, take a look in the mirror. Take a look in the mirror and then come back to me and call me a noob, okay? Because uh, we're about to have a good game with the compass map. Even though I'm always told you can't have good games with the compass map. And we're going up to this early position here to scout. Uh, the T92 on our team actually pinged this location um, asking for scouts. And I wanted to go here anyway, so here we are. And hopefully we'll be getting some good old assist damage. Take a hit from the T32. He actually pens us there. We're going to put in a shell on him. And we finish him off there. And uh, we're going to pull back. Try to go undetected here. We go undetected. Can we find a shell into this guy? No, we can't. But we take a shell. 490 alpha damage was the shell. Probably a Ferdinand or something of the sort. Something with a 128mm gun. We need to keep an eye out for T34. Do we have any shots on him? We do not. But now I'm, I've decided, you know what? I think we're safe enough to go back into the bush. And we're up to 1,200 assist damage. And now we spotted a T110E4. Artillery hits another shell. We're up to over 2,000 assist damage now. And uh, we're only going to be here for a few more moments here. We're going to be leaving fairly soon as uh, the time kind of runs out. This usefulness of this position really only works early game. And then you kind of want to just leave and move on. And that's what we're going to do here. Put a shell into the Ferdinand. Track him. Immobilize him. Looking at the map. Realizing, alright, this is not where we want to be now. Paying attention to my compass map. Seeing where everybody is in relativity to myself. Did I use that right there? I think I did. So, haha. And look at the speed. Look at this speed. This is really nice. This is nice. I mean, we're, we're not quite hitting 50 yet, but we will. 20 horsepower per ton is phenomenal. Yes, it is. And we're going to this position up here where we can actually get some insanely good shots on these guys as they advance. And we might be able to just farm. Our team is actually losing right now. Even though we got a quick early kill off of the T32. And then some nice damage on the 4005. We're still losing this game. Was it the 4005? I don't know. We got 2000 assists though. Suffice it to say. And I don't exactly know which tanks we got that off of. But we still got some early damage off of those guys. So that's pretty nice. Plus two shots of our own. And now we are... Actually, three shots of our own. 
Yeah, that's right, we shot the Vernon. And now we're in a position to start putting shells into the Super Conqueror as he advances. We put one into him. Will we be able to get another shell off into the Super Conqueror? He's giving us, yes, his side tank. Boom, we put it in, we track him, immobilize him. And uh, if he's already used his repair kit or he doesn't pack one, we're going to be able to keep doing this. He uses his repair kit there, I think, and we put another one in. But we miss his tracks. We could have caught him there unless that was just a really good crew, unfortunately. But we've got another chance here. Now I change my mind. It's not a good shot. But that right there is a good shot. We kill off the Grill 15, the Grilla, however you want to say that, Grille, and uh, it's dead now. It is gone. We get spotted for the first time in this position. Now that we're undetected, we're going to be using this. We're trying to go into this bush and use our gun depression to get this shot off, but we can't quite do it. There's not quite enough traction here, so we're going to have to go all the way up and probably get spotted if we do to get this done. 50B is moving on inside of a T-34. Fire it off, put it in. Easy, easy shot there. Super Conqueror is still a little bit hauled down there. There we go. That's an easy shot right there. Side turret, no problem. Go straight in. And he's now a two-shot for us, and our damage is just going up and up, along with our assist damage, because we are spotting these guys. Put the shell in, and he actually catches our drive wheel there. Pretty pretty crazy, actually. I didn't think he had a shot there, but it was probably just a little bit of latency on my end, just because I'm connecting to an EU. So, even though it looked like I was behind cover there, I probably wasn't, because that was happening to me all day, actually, as I was playing this tank. So I think that's all that was, a case of just, you know, I'm connected to the EU. And can we get the kill on him? No, we missed the kill shot, unfortunately. But somebody else gets a big hit in on someone else. Uh, I think it was that T-34. All right, E-4 shot the T-34. And we were spotting him. We split, I think, half of it. So that's pretty nice. Get some more assists. And he outspots us there because we weren't able to get our gun around or our turret around the corner. Just our drive wheel. So he spots us and decided, now we're not going to take that risk. And so instead, we're going to go after this guy. And we're going to go underneath the guns here and get into a position where we can use 10 degrees of gun depression. Though we poke a little too high as the T-32 pens us. I don't know if he hit us in the hull or perhaps he penned our turret with APCR. It doesn't matter. He puts damage into us and then down goes the Super Conqueror. Now we're going after this AMX 50B. He'll be coming over this ridge. We decided to shoot the first one on the move. We probably should have stopped and aimed. In fact, if we'd stopped and aimed, we might have been able to get our damage total up to 5,000. Um, but alas, we don't. We put a shell in. Hit his ammo rack. We're going to be able to get one more shell into him. Before we move on to the E4, come on, come on, reload, reload, reload. Yes, we are. We put another shell in, and then he gets finished off by the T110 E4 on our left. And all that's left is their T110 E4. But looking at the tanks that we have left alive, IS-7, AMX M4, so on, and some friends. Uh, yeah, there's no way we're going to get there in time. And he gets finished off. But not too shabby. I'll take that as, um, you know, a first impression. I really, really will. 3,000 damage to our assist 4800 was that raw damage or was it 4600 we'll see 4875 raw damage 178,000 credits made because of the double credit week it's not a weekend interestingly enough usually i say double credit weekend but it's not it's just a regular week and we get a second class this thing is going to be hard to ace in our very next game we decided to take an aggressive position on south coast but unfortunately, I was a little bit slow on what you're about to see. It hits us in the MRAC. We go to repair it. But once again, just a slight bit of latency. Didn't allow us to repair it in time. And we get MRAC'd. And that was our very next game after steps. But do not worry. We have another replay for you guys. When I find myself in a tank with gun depression and a good turret, I really, really enjoy Pilsen. I've, I think I've had some, a lot of really good games on this map. I think this one is a very comfortable map. Uh, very easy to defend if you take the hills, the ridge lines, um, in the east, which we're going to do in this game here. And if you're able to do that, you can really carry the game, hold the game high, and win some games that almost seem unwinnable and have some really good results as you shoot into town and defend your base from relative cover. It's really, really good. You can shoot the enemy base, you can shoot your own base, you can get spun out by teammates, and, and I, that, that was happening to me a lot today um, as I was playing this tank. Um, I have quite a few replays in this thing, which I'm probably going to use on a later date. And we just kept getting spun out, man. And it was like, what? Another guy spitting us out? How can this be? Uh, yeah. So, that, 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 that just seems to be a thing here on the, the EU server. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I had another instance where we were all clustered up. Hello, Waffle. We were all clustered up. We had all these meme tanks. So we were just swarming the enemy team. And we were all bumping into each other the entire time. And then... This uh, patent in front of me brake checks to hit a guy on the move, and it's saying I'm right behind him, so he brake checks, and I, so I ram into the back of him, and so his shell goes off, and then the rest of the game he spent trying to block me. He had three marks of excellence too, and he was in a Russian clan. He was like, "Well, 
This is the EU server, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome aboard. He had like a, he had really good W8 too. I looked him up. He had like 3600 W8, but he only had a 58% win rate, which is like what? I have 300 less W8, but 5% more, 6% more win rate. And that's because that's probably the very reason why, you know. But I'm just uh, buying time as we sit here fighting hull down tanks, and we're it's not going to go very successful here in this position we're in, and we're going to kind of try to move on from this position very fairly soon from now. Um, our town is kind of falling, and those guys just sitting there hull down are just not not good. We have two artillery, and one of them is trying to shoot them, uh, but the other one is not paying attention, and the one who is trying to shoot them is. A tier 8. So he's got a longer reload. There we go. We put a shell in it, and he's a little bit less accurate. So, gotta keep that in mind. We lose another tank, but uh, hopefully we'll finish this guy off in about two seconds. Come on! No, we don't. The action X finished him off instead. But now we have some good shots on this guy! No, we do not. Yet again, we don't have good shots. And I'm, I'm now noticing, like, eh, we may want to fall back sometime soon to kind of defend the base. But can we get a shot into this guy first? Yes, we can. Shoot for the turret cheeks, and we can easily go through that. Which is something quite different between the Action X and the FV4202, as you saw from yesterday's video. Is the, the Action X, you can actually go through those cheeks. If you're on the in the FV4202, you, you can't. You can't pen the FV4202 cheeks like that. But uh, you can the Action X, so there we go. Um, if you're fighting an Action X, that's where you want to shoot. If you're fighting the... Uh, the FE422, that's where you don't want to shoot. You want to shoot him in the gun. You don't want to shoot the Action X in the gun, however, because that's probably not going to go in, as that's 254 millimeters of inconsistent armor, awkwardly angled, doing all sorts of things. You know, you never know where you're going to go and what it's going to do. But so far, this has been a fairly slow, slow game. But I realize that the enemy team is about to probably push through this. And I debated right now. I was like, do I want to drive down there? And, oh, I have a kill shot on this guy. That's what we're going to go for. Nope, never mind. Going back to the waffle. And it looks like it gets eaten by that little trailer. I thought we could shoot through that, but apparently we can't. I thought about driving down and breaking these walls, but then I changed my mind and it was a good thing because as soon as I changed my mind, people started popping up. We have an E100 in front of us, a waffle E100 as well. Aiming a shot at this guy's lower plate, but he gives us the side turret. We go for that instead. Easy penetration there as it goes goes in, flies st straight. Easy peasy. Can go through his lower plate now. Now nah, we're going to go for the grill instead. Fire it off. Boom, straight into the grill. 15. There's another one. Look, look at that. Just grills everywhere. And we're going to try to put another shell into this grill 15. Here we go. Aim up a shot. And it goes into his tracks, unfortunately. But we have a teammate next to us who is also shooting at the same target as us. Puts it in. Grill bounces off of us. And uh, we pick up some assist and put another shell into him. And now, can we put one last shot into him? Oh, it's a slim shot. 0.32 accuracy. No problem, says the gun. Says the chieftain gun on the chisel. It goes straight in. But we're still losing this game. Canarvin over there now. Waffle over on the other side. He didn't like us shooting him very much. But you know what? We're going to shoot you again anyway. Fired off. Straight in. We probably broke his gun there as we get a critical hit. And our damage total continues to go up. Actually, that was a blind one. So you don't. it doesn't get added to our damage total. So we don't know exactly how much we've done until the end of the game. But now we have this E100 and in an interesting position. I wasn't quite expecting him to go here because that kind of... Puts him in a position where he can't really do anything. But then again, on this map, when you have medium tanks where we are, there is really nothing you can do. You can't really dig us out. You kind of have to let us dig you out. And uh, that's not something that these guys are doing. STI aiming at us. He misses his shell. And uh, we're going to switch to some APCR, premium APCR, as we go for the hull down turret of this E100. Plus, our team is beginning to just collapse. And uh, I really, really want to win this game. But now we have a Panzer Gumbog in here. We're going to fire a shell right there. It gets eaten by the wall, unfortunately, and does not fly where we need it to. I don't know if those walls stop bullets or not. I thought they didn't, but apparently they do, or I don't know. But now we have grill, we're going to snap him, boom, straight in, and we finish him off. We knew he was going to pull back the moment we looked at him, so we decided to snap it off, and we do, we're quicker than him, and the shell flies straight. Now we have this E100 aiming at his cheek, and we miss the shell because we get distracted by the Carnarvon. We see him pop up on our radar compass minimap, and that allows us to see him quickly, and change our attention to him rather rapidly and not take any hits from the rear because we are using the compass map again one of the benefits of using a compass map especially since you can just press your back button or select button or whatever it is on the PlayStation 4 to simply look at the large one or just you know pay attention with your eyeballs as to what's going on can we shoot through this we try again no we can't we break the wall but we're unable to shoot through it yet again. And now we have a kill on this Waffle Panzer. Easy shot right there. But as soon as we fire, the Panzer Gumbagen 7 pulls out. And we hit him in the drive wheel instead. Taking the hit for his 
Waffle Panzer. Now we're gonna fire shell in this guy's cheeks. We do, but he does return fire and hit us in our rather weak Capolas of 76 millimeters. And they're not huge, but they're not small either. And we have a nice shot in the Waffle. Yes, we do. We put it in. Break his gun again. That's the second time I think his gun has been broken. And the STI puts a shell into the side of our turret, but he bounces harmlessly off. And now the game is tied, though one of our tanks is artillery, and he's probably going to die soon. E100 is a one-shot. Can we finish him off? No, he backs up right as we fired his cheeks, and we are unable to kill him. Down goes our last remaining tank, minus the M60. Do we have the kill on him this time? Yes, we do. He goes down, and it's three versus three yet again. But I get my spidey tingles. Oh, there he is. The waffle is now trying to flank us, and we're going to go after him. We don't need these premium rounds for him, but we're going to keep them loaded anyway, because my heart was pounding like, my goodness, my goodness, can we ace this tank? Can we ace this tank? I did not think I was going to ace it in the session I had in it today, but I think we might be able to fire a shell. Boom, we put it in. He bounces off of us. We load a Hess shell. Here comes our M60. He should put a shell into him. Yes, he does. He misses our M60, and I'm like, oh, let's go get him. And then I remember, wait, he's got a, an auto loader. We probably don't want to do that. We're going to wait for him to pull back a little bit, try to push through. We miss our shell with the Hesh, going back to APCR, and we're going to close the distance on him and try to finish him off. Our M60 is going to go for the flank as we go for this side. We're going to pincer him. Our M60 misses, but now he's not looking at us. Now he is looking at us, but we're faster than him. We finish him off, and he goes down. Now we're going to change our attention to the STI. Our M60 is a one-shot, and the Panzerkampfwagen, if I remember correctly, was at about 800, 900 health left. Last time we saw him, though, he was fighting another tank, and artillery were shooting at him, so he might have lost some health. But, you know, we can't bet on that. We're going to have to just assume he still has about 1,000 hit points left. Can we get a shell in him there? No, we cannot. And I want to check to see where he is. I'm going to check over here, see if he's crossing the open yet. He is not. Because of that, we're going to go after this ST1. Maybe he already snuck past it and is with the ST1. He just hasn't crested the ridge yet. I don't know. But we're going to find out rather soon. And we're going to use our 10 degrees of gun depression here. Put a shell nice into his turret. Actually, that went into his turret ring, even though we aimed at his lower plate. And then the uh, heat round from the M60 easily goes in. We fire a shell, goes into his tracks. And we're going to aim at his lower plate. Now the M60 should put an easy free shot into him with his heat. He does aim at his lower plate. Shell goes high into his upper plate. And we bounce off. 310 millimeters of APCR pen isn't the greatest. Then again, I think it's more fair than having 350 like the M60 has. Or is it 330? I think that tank is special with 306, 350. And he can just go through anywhere. But our last shell flies straight. And we finish off the Panzer Compact 7. Shooting him in the fighting compartment. And we're able to win the game. Whew. Pretty intense game. Pretty fun game. Those are the games you uh, live for, right? That's why you play this t this game. This World of Tanks. Mercenaries. is for those games. 136,000 credits made. 7,100 damage done. 2,400 assisted. 4,400 damage blocked. Ace tanker. And the mark is steadily going up. I hope um, Flying Egg doesn't mind as the mark of excellence goes up on this thing. Um, I hope he wasn't planning on just doing it all by himself. But yep, that's the game. We get the Ace Tanker with 1,900 base experience points. Not too shabby, not too shabby. Let's go play some live gameplay now. Red Shire 1944, one of my all-time favorite maps. Ooh, baby. What a choice for a live game, boys and girls. Young and old. Red Shire 1944, what are we going to do? Anything we want, really. Look at this map. I love this map. This is a good map. Uh, the regular Red Shot is also really good. Lakeville is pretty good. Westfield's pretty good. Sand River is good. There's a lot of good maps in this game. Oh, baby! A three man already platoon on both sides. Oh. Well. Hmm. Welcome to. EU, I guess. Gun Rammer, Vertical Stabilizer, Vents is our. Equipment loadout. And we have 30 APCR standard, 20 APCR premium, and a 9 Hesh. Large, repair kit, large, med kit, food. And then for the crew, we have uh, Brothers in Arms, repairs, six cents, recon situation. We're in a snapshot, smooth ride, and we're at 90%, or flying egg, should I say. We're using his crew and his tank. Is at 90% with uh, silent driving. No way. What? He what? 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 
What part of his tank did we not hit? <laughs> you scum. You scum. Sergeant Blaze. Somebody kill that. I'll play it to you. Easy shot. Easy, cheap, reliable, free shot. Put another one in for good measure. And one already is down. That's good news. But we are down our repair kit, which is bad news, because the amount of times I've been Amorak playing this tank is ridiculous. Aw, oh, we missed the kill. That's huge. You're actually coming? My goodness, you're not very smart, are you? That's okay. Because now he's dead. And now so are we. Nice! Side on. But it's a mercenary tank, so... You don't get to do any damage to him. I forgot that's how uh, mercenary tanks work. Shoot him in the side or don't shoot him at all. That's the saying, right? I mean, shoot him in the front or don't shoot him at all. That's the saying when you're fighting a mercenary tank. Nice ammo, kid. I'm gonna shoot you there again. Just so you know, I'm going to shoot you there again. And that, my friends, is the RNG on penetration. set up 500 damage you set up and shoot perfectly same exact spot better angle and everything but then uh you don't damage him there we go damage is damage i feel like i'm working really hard for this damage like i really do like i feel like i'm working overtime for this damage Is that already the stand last? Let's continue. Let's go after this chisel. There he is. Everyone is spotted, minus the artillery. You are by yourself. Unless already hits me, we're gonna kill you. But, you know, we are probably gonna be killed by artillery. That's how the game works. Just kidding, Artie. Artie, 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 Artie. Always shoot Artie, guys. Whenever you have a chance to kill Artie, kill it. Hmm, wow, that was a, an impressive snap. And you're dead. Congrats! We have shots on him there. Ooh. Ooh, and we're spotting him. Alright, well, let's go after the pigs. What's the other pig? A T92. Alright, it, Hesh it is. Hesh, 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 Hesh. We're the fastest ones. We're gonna get there first, boys. Come on! This is damage waiting to be had. Oh, and... The CGC just fired, so you're the target. Oh my gosh, we rolled low. No problem, though. No problem. Mine. Mine! Haha! <laughs> we did it! A GG. This is a good tank. I, I like this tank a whole lot. And I think I'm gonna get back onto my account and I'm gonna grind the living daylights out of this contract. Because I really want this tank now that I've played it. Like, really, really want this tank. Man, oh man. Mm, mm. Hey, we're almost up to 80%. Look at that. Look at that. Well, guys, that's the, the video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, slap that like button. Comment, subscribe. Do you have this tank? Do you like it? Are you? Uh, do you fear these tanks? Are you excited about getting one? Do you think they're fairly balanced? Personally, playing it, I think everything we've done in this tank, we could have done in the patent or the Action X as well. It's just this one is a little bit faster. Um, and the gun is kind of worse and yet better at the same time. And what I mean by that is the gun handling is worse on this thing. And the DPM is worse. 
but uh, you have two extra millimeters of penetration, ten extra alpha. So I don't know if that's enough to trade off, but the tank is good. It really is good. You take the best of pretty much three different tanks, put them together, and uh, it's a it's a fairly good tank. And plus this trolley, annoying mercenary side armor. I hate mercenary armor, guys. I really do. I really really do. Um, but you know what? It has it. And uh, you saw us bounce off the side of this chisel. And uh, yeah, you know, just just how it is. Just how it is. Anyway, thank you, Flying Ed, for sending this in. Sending uh, not this in, but sending the your account over to me so I could use it. Uh, it's been a pleasure. And thank you everyone for tuning in. And I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Slap that like button, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys all next time. Take care, everyone. And peace out.